Isla is notorious for its smoky, peaty whiskies, but that's not the only place you'll find them. Welcome back, Dram Fam, to the Whiskey Diary. Peat is a pretty polarizing flavor in whiskey. Some of you love the stuff, swear by it even. And some of you absolutely cannot stand it. Me? Me, yeah, it comes in waves. I go through weeks of wanting nothing more than a big, oily, medicinal iodine smoke bomb. Other times, that TCP smell turns my stomach. For the most part, I think it's fair to say we synonymize these whiskies with Isla. Distilleries like Ardberg, Laphroaig, Lagavulin, all notorious for their distinctly peaty palettes. I went into this in detail in another video. I'll link that below, but historically, this was the fuel source readily available for drying the barley to make whiskey. Peat being used as a fuel source isn't exclusive to Isla, but due to the flora and fauna, no pun intended, and the geographic nature of the place, i.e. a big rocky island in the sea, the peat there has a different composition to that of mainland peat. When burned as a fuel, Isla peats tend to impart a more medicinal, pungent, chemically flavour than the generally more smoky and earthy flavours of Highland peat. So, I thought, it might be fun to go through some bottles I've got to showcase some peated alternatives to Isla, which will still scratch that smoky itch. First up, we have the 10 year old Glen Turret peat smoked. This is a 10 year old Highland whiskey from the Glen Turret distillery. It was bottled at 50% ABV. It is unchill filtered. It is natural color. It is a vatting of first fill and second fill European and American oak casks. And while it is 57 pounds on Master of Malt, you can get it for around 50 quid if you look elsewhere. The nose on this, it's super sweet and nutty. The peat is quite ashy, but it's got a really nice kind of grapefruit, citrus fruitiness. Palette wise, it's all like milk chocolate and wood smoke. Uh, it immediately turns kind of a bit mushroomy and then that fruitiness comes forward and kind of comes across like cheap apple pie. If you've ever had those Mr. Kipling cheap apple pies. Finish wise, it's kind of short, kind of chocolatey, a little bit of cereal in there, kind of strikes me a bit like a, a bourbon biscuit. I like this a lot. It feels like a really nice kind of refined, thought out, balanced whiskey. For me, this is a kind of stamp of Highland peat. It's nice and smoke forward, but um, very little in the way of like medicinal notes. That nice ashy thing going on still gives you a bit of a nod back to Isla, but then again, it does state that they source their peat from different places. So there is a chance that there is a smidge of Isla peat in there. Next up, we have the Macri Moore Cask Strength. This is a no age statement island whiskey from the Loch Ranza distillery that would make it an Aran whiskey. Bottled up at 56.2%, this is unchill filtered, natural color. It doesn't specify any kind of cask finish, but you can pick this up for 49 pounds 70 from Master of Malt on the nose. Right up front, it's like, canned peaches in syrup, like really, really sweet, sugary peaches. That um, that peat comes forward as kind of like an ashy, salty barbecue sauce. It's kind of a mix between that really nice wood smoky, sweet, meaty peat, and like that really nice, brighty, saline, salty peat. Palette wise, the first thing that hits you is that like, peaches in syrup thing, maybe like an apples and pears going on there, but then immediately turns like really coastal and briny. The peat here turns a lot less wood smoke and it really is like a nice, sharp, salty, almost sour kind of peat note. The finish on this is insane. It's almost now like red berries, kind of think cherries, like wood and wood smoky, cherry barbecue sauce almost. It's got like a really nice, like a caramelly sweetness. 
For those that don't know, the Isle of Arran is right next to Campbelltown, just over the other side of kind of the peninsula from Isla, but it does have a suitably similar climate and peat style. Named after a famous magical peat bog, really. This was an original batch release, but over time has become part of their core range. This is the cask strength, ver cask strength version of it, but they do have a regular 46%, but also keep an eye out for some of their other expressions. For instance, you can get the sherried fingles cut, which I think is absolutely exceptional. Next up, we have the Kubokan Signature. This is a no age statement Highland whiskey from the Tomartan Distillery. It is bottled up at 46% ABV. It is unchill filtered. It is natural color. It is a vatting of bourbon, Oloroso, and American virgin oak casks. And you can pick this up from Master of Malt for around 40 pounds. Now this one is super interesting. It's super gentle on the nose. There's like a floral, honey, almost like an orchard fruits thing going on. Really nice, really gentle, really fruity on the palate. It's like a sooty, charred meat vibe. Um, have you ever had like, when you have a barbecue and you get like little flecks of charcoal on like a chicken wing or a sausage or something like that. That's how the, um, that's how the peat, the smokiness really manifests itself in this. Alongside that though, it's a really nice fruity palette, loads of like br uh, stewed apples and pears. It's not until we get to the finish though that we start to see any of those like nice sherry notes coming through and that peat then comes back as like a really nice sweet wood smoke. Not an overly long finish, but it does have a really nice kind of sherry spiciness just on the end. For those of you that don't know, Kubokan is basically just the name for lightly peated tomaten. It's lovely liquid, but it is nothing life-changing at all. But then again, for 40 quid, I feel that you are getting a lot more than your money's worth. It's especially good for those who are like, not super into peat yet, but kind of want to ease themselves into it with something that's, you know, a really nice lightly peated dram. I do have one complaint about this. While the bottle does look absolutely fantastic, you cannot read a damn word that's written on it. So why have you gone to the effort of putting it on there if you make it so that you can't read it? Next up, we have the Lecheg 10 year old. This is of course an Ireland whiskey distilled and bottled by the Tobamori distillery. This 46.3% whiskey is unchill filtered. It is natural color. And while I could not find any cask information on it, you can pick this up from Master of Malt for £42.75. The nose on this is like a really coastal, earthy peat. It's got like an almost like oily fish thing going on. And just like hints of kind of those medicinal notes start to pop through on the palette. It's got such a like a crazy contrast of flavors right up front. It's got really nice kind of toffee notes, toffee and black pepper. And then right behind that is like this really vegetal earthiness. Like it almost tastes damp, like damp and mineralic. Finish wise, it's almost like really nice, sweet salted caramel flavors with almost, um, almost like a really fruity like black coffee kind of note like it's it's bitter but it's fruity and maybe even a hint of like super super dark chocolate now i think that if you like an isla you'll love this it's definitely oily coastal and like salty but it's just a little bit lighter and a little bit more approachable than you might find from say an ardbeg or a lafroig if you're making the transition over to peated whiskey and you know you found a few that you like but you can't quite get on board with any of like the super big PT Ardbegs and the Froigs and the Lagavulins and whatever else, this should probably be your next purchase. Now last but by no means least we have the Kilkerran 12 year old. This is of course a 12 year old Campbelltown whiskey distilled 
by the Glengyle Distillery. Bottled up at 46%, it is unchill filtered, it is natural color. It is a vatting of 70% bourbon casks and 30% sherry cask. And while this is not always available, when it is, you can find it down for around 48 pounds. On the nose, the first thing I get from this is very, very distinctly Kit Kat. Like if you've ever had a Kit Kat chunky, it straight up just smells identical to a Kit Kat. Really nice kind of sweet cereally notes. Right behind that, there's actually a really big kind of red fruits like berries note kind of going on. And then alongside that is almost like a peanut butter. And I think that's those bourbon casks shining through like a really nice um, sweet peanut butter. Palette wise, this is surprisingly light. Really nice kind of vanilla and apples. The peat is almost like super gentle and effervescent um, and it's got like a just a, a weird funky saltiness almost kind of tastes like there's some ready salted crisps going on in there on the finish is where we get that that Campbelltown funk that like slightly oily salty funkiness there's still a really nice like apple and pear fruitiness, some really nice soft vanilla notes going on, but it's on that tail end where you get that kind of more classic Campbelltown taste. This is one of those examples of just a really good quality, lightly peated kind of standard issue whiskey. There is nothing life-changing here. There is nothing wildly unique about this, but it absolutely reeks of quality and it has got barrels of flavor, pun absolutely intended. Now I do have their uh, eight year old uh, cask strength sherry cask matured, which in my opinion is a much more interesting kind of bigger, juicier dram, but that is kind of hard to get hold of to a point where if you do fancy it, um, you'll probably find yourself trawling the auctions and you may have to pay over the odds to get it. But anyway, that's enough from me. Thank you all very much for watching and as usual, an extra special thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon. If you've liked this video, please do hit the like button and if you'd like to support the channel, please do consider subscribing. Let me know down in the comments if you've tried any of these or if you have got any non-Isla peated whiskies that you love. And on that note, Slangevar.